Hello everyone, welcome to my channel physics for ap So in our part 2 we were discussing about the quantum numbers. So we are discussed about the principal quantum number and we are discussed about the angular momentum quantum number and next we discuss about the magnetic and the spin quantum numbers. So these quantum numbers are used to find the probability, the maximum probability of finding an electron around the nucleus. So this is what we have discussed about the quantum numbers in our previous episode. Now we are going to discuss about the electronic configuration. So what is that? Uh, what is the meaning of the electronic configuration? So electronic configuration is it is the shorthand notation. It is the shorthand notation with uh, the representation of So it is a shorthand notation with the representation of the principal number or what we call the principal quantum number. The principal quantum number. Next, the subshells or what we call as the orbitals and the number of electrons. So it is a shorthand notation with the help with the representation of the principal quantum number. So we represent the principal quantum number with the letter N and uh, with the representation of the subshell or what we call the orbitals. So the orbitals are represented with the letter small l and the dots are written on the power of it which is represented as x. So n is the principal quantum number which is represented by n. So here the shorthand notation we represent with the principal quantum number n, the subshells as l and the number of electrons as x. So here uh, before going to the electronic configuration, so there are some of the rules which we need to follow the rule and the principle which we need to follow for the electronic configuration. So we should not go for blindly to write the electronic configuration as 1s, 2s and something and so on. So the electronic configuration needs a certain principle. It has a certain principle and a certain rule. So what is the first principle is? So the first principle is called as the Aufbau principle. The Aufbau principle. So what is the use of this Aufbau principle? So Aufbau principle is nothing but the electrons. I'm writing in a short form, so it will be easy to understand for you. So the electrons are arranged according to the according to the increase of the n plus l values or what we call the energy levels. So that is what we discuss about the Aufbau principle. So the arrangement of the electrons. So the arrangement of the electrons are done in a such a way that it should be arranged according to the increasing orders. So the increasing order of the n plus n values or what we call the energy levels also Aufbau principle so Aufbau principle is derived the Aufbau, the word Aufbau is derived from the German word that means the building blocks so as a building blocks we make it from step by step from the smaller one to the larger one the same thing also the Aufbau principle that is we we arrange the electrons from the lower values to the higher energy levels that is for this we have a Mueller chart so Mueller chart. So with the help of this Mueller chart, we will find out the increasing order of the energy levels. So the Mueller chart represents that is first we start from we first we start from 1s. So 1 is the principal number 
and yes is the subshell which is the starting so if starting is one yes second two yes two p next three yes three p three d next four s four p four d four f next five s five p five d five f six s six p six d seven s seven p and eight s so we need to represent in a triangle form so it should be in a triangle form so the one two three four five six seven eight these are all the shells that is the first shell second shell third shell fourth fifth sixth seven and eight shells so we need to represent them in the form of a triangle form now we have to come in an arrangement of first the values should enter into should be entering into the first orbit the first energy level which is the oneness next goes to 2s next goes to 2p and 3s next go for 3p 4s next after that we go for 3d 4p 5p uh, 4p and 5s next we go for 4d 5p 6s next 4f 5d 6p 7s and the last we go for 5f 6d 7p 8s so this is the increasing order of the energy levels which we call as the n plus l values so if you get a confused about uh, like in uh, some of the competitive examinations they may give you some of that which of the following is having low energy level which of the following is having the low energy level and they will give you some of the values like uh, uh, 3d and uh, 5s and uh, 3p and we call another one as 4f for example they have given like this and they told you to find out the low level among these four which one is considered to be as a low energy level so to consider in the examinations what most of them they will do is they will start making the Moiler chart then prepare it all this and draw the lines and the find out one which one is the lower the lower one that they will see in the increasing order so it takes so much of time so instead of doing that the lower energy level the higher energy level or making them these four into an arrangement of the single levels that can be done only with the help of the formula that is n plus n value so n plus n value you need to find out then with the help of this we can say that which is the lower energy level for example if you take the first option that is 3d so 3d is as the n value is 3 as represented in the notation that is the n value which is said to be called as 3 3 plus and l value so what is the value of d for l as we have learned uh, gone through the angular momentum quadrant number so the d value is 2 p value is 1 s value is 0 f value is 3 so the d value is 2 so present it as 2 now 3 plus 2 is equals to 5 next coming to 5s so in this 5s which one is the n value yes so 5 is the n value plus s value is 0 so here also we got 5 next coming to 3p so here the third option 3p the n value is 3 plus the p value the p value is 1 so we write it as 1 so 3 plus 1 4 next fourth option so here the n value is 4 plus f value so the f value is 3 so we write it as 3 so 4 plus 3 is equals to 7 now which is the lower value here 4 that means 3p so 3p is the lower energy level and if they ask the question as 
which is the higher energy orbit or higher energy level that will be considered as 4 why because it is 7 so with the help of this n plus n value so this is a small technique so that you can find out easily with less time all you need to know is the you need to know that these are the l value n values and you need to know that these are the l values over here and this is the Mollo chart so based upon the Mollo chart first you need to enter into the 1s orbital and next you need to enter into the 2s orbital next you need to enter into the 2p orbital next 3s next 3p next 4s next 3d next 4p next 5s and so on so last you will be going on to the 8 yes so you need to come in a this order after 5 years, you have to come for 4D, 5P, 6S. Next, 4F, 5D, 6P, 7S. Next, 5F, 6D, 7P and 8S. So this is the order that you need to maintain that this principle was explained by the Aubau principle, which the electron should be arranged in the increasing order of the N plus N values or what we call the energy levels. And this is the Moiler chart. So this Moiler chart is mostly much important previous in previous examinations as it was important for the examinations but now for the last three years the Moiler chart has not been asked next coming to the next principle as our principle is the first one which you need to follow and the second is the Hund's rule second one we call it as the Hund's rule so what does the Hund's rule represent here? So Hund's rule represents that the electrons should be filled into the degenerating orbitals degenerating orbitals when they are Singly occupied. Singly occupied. So that is the degenerating orbitals what we have like the px, py, pj that what we have discussed. So the degenerating orbitals should be filled first. That is the degenerating orbitals like these. Whenever the electrons are being entering into the degenerating orbitals, here in all the degenerating orbitals it should be entered into first. Now let us take an example of first, we will take an example of uh, what we take like a nitrogen. Let us take an example for nitrogen. So nitrogen atomic number is 7. So for this you need to write, write the electronic configuration. So first orbital should be entered into 1s. Second it should be entered into 2s. Third it should be entered into 2 third it should be entered into 3s yes. next it should be entered into 3p and so on so as we know that so nitrogen atomic number 7 that means it has 7 electrons so the 7 electrons should be placed into these orbitals so energy levels so as we know s orbital can hold only 2 electrons that already we have discussed it in a, the magnetic quantum number so the s orbital can be hold only 2 p orbital can be hold 6 d orbital 10 and f orbital 14 so s orbital can be hold as two. another 2s so here also 2s so it can be hold as 2 now how many are left out of 7 4 are completed and how much we have is 3 that 3 should be completed into this p no more electrons to be filled so this will be omitted out so we can write it as 1s2 2s2 2p3 so that is electronic configuration for the nitrogen and here the Hund's rule represent is as if you take the degenerating orbitals as you take the degenerating orbitals so the electron arrangement should be done in a such a way that it should obey the Aufbau principle and also the Hund's rule 
the first electron it should be come into the first box degenerate orbital the first box second as there is no other continuous like this so the second or electron should be move into the the same box coming to the second first electron it should be filled over here as there is no continuity of a box so the second electron also should be placed here but it is in opposite direction next coming to three electrons so we have three electrons so the first electron will be filled up here and the third electron will not be filled up down here why because there are still continuous degenerating orbital that is what the degenerating orbital should be singly occupied singly occupied then only we have to make it completely filled up like first one electron here here another electron over here another electron so this is the complete electronic configuration for the nitrogen now for example let us take for a fluorine fluorine so we have a fluorine atomic number as 9 now the electron configuration will be 1s 2s 2p 3s so let us see so first as nine, there are 9 electrons with me so yes orbital 2 electrons will be filled another yes another 2 electrons will be filled and how many are left it out 4 out of 9 4 are completed so we have 5 electrons so 5 electrons can be filled here why because p can hold maximum 6 so we can place the 5 electrons over here so s is omitted now the electronic configuration is 1s2 2s2 2p5 now while representing the degenerating orbitals so first electron second electron should be placed in the same box first next third electron next fourth electron next coming to the fifth electron it should be placed over here one as there are five electrons so five electrons should be placed here so you cannot place it directly up down up down up down so first what it should be first it should be singly occupied one two three now all the boxes are singly occupied now still again if you have the electrons now now here see you have five electrons out of five one two three are being singly occupied now how many electrons do you have you have two electrons now those two electrons should be come back again from the first that is from here to be filled out four and five now this is the electronic configuration for the fluorine in other case we can take an example for carbon so carbon atomic number 6 so if we can write the electronic configuration as 1s 2s 2p so 6 we have so 1s 2 yes 2s 2 p out of 6 2 are completed 2 are there so p 2p 2 now here while write representing the degenerating orbitals so one electron up one electron down one up one down and coming here to the two electrons so as two electrons are present over here so first electron should be placed in a first degenerating orbital and the second electron should not be placed down here according to the rule it should move on to the second degenerating orbital and next do we have any other electrons so for two two they have been completed now this is the electronic configuration for the carbon like same as for also we can do the electronic configuration for silicon also the little big, bigger one so silicon symbol is si so that big number is 14 so what you have to do is write the electronic configuration 1s 2s 2p 3s 3p 4s and next what we have after 4s we have 3d and so on let us see so 14 electrons we have so first S orbital can be filled up to here S it can be filled out as 2 P orbital it can be filled as 6 maximum 6 now up to here how many we got it 6 plus 2 8 8 plus 2 10 now out of 14 10 has been completed now we have only 4 now coming to S orbital so S orbital can be hold only 2 so you need to place it as 2 now 2 completed now what is the another 3p so in this 3p the remaining two will be move on to the 3p orbital that is this now 4s 3d are no more needed 
so they are been omitted now the electronic configuration for the silicon is 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 and 3p2 so this is the electronic configuration for uh, silicon okay now i think you got a idea about what is hund's rule and what is aufbau principle so aufbau principle is you need to or arrange the electrons according to the increasing order of their n plus n values over the energy levels after completion of that the you have to follow the hund's rule so hund's rule is nothing but we have to occupy the dejecting orbitals first that means they should be singly occupied the, then you have to be completed first without complete without making it like what we have to do some of the most of them in during the examinations what they will do is for example if we have 2p 4e we have so four electrons we have so what they will do is 1 2 3 4 that they will do it so this is a wrong one so this is this is violated this uh, working method is been violated by the hund's rule that is it should be in a correct method and that can be written as as there are four electrons first one next two next three next four again if you have further electrons you need to place it down and here also down over here so this is about the hund's rule and this is about the abo principle and last we have another principle which is called as pauli's exclusion principle pauli's exclusion exclusion principle so what is this pauli's exclusion principle is pauli's exclusion principle states that no two electrons no two no two electrons have the same four quantum numbers i think you got it we have the four quantum numbers right so that is the principal quantum number which is denoted as l the angular momentum quantum number which is denoted as l and the magnetic quantum number and the spin quantum number which is denoted as ms so the pauli's exclusion principle says that in an element okay in an element or in an atom no two electrons will be having the same four quantum numbers that is n will be different l will be different ml will be different and ms also will be different for suppose if these four quantum numbers are different uh, so if these four quant uh, three quantum numbers are same the fourth quantum number that is the spin quantum number will be the different like example i tell you like if we take helium helium atomic number is 2 we have only two electrons now the electron configuration for the helium will be 1 s 2 only 1 s 2 so electron configuration for helium will be 1 s 2 now we, what we have to do is we have to write the four quantum numbers for this helium now here the four quantum numbers first one is n l ml and ms remember that this is one also this is one of the important thing that is they will give an element and they will tell you to write the four quantum numbers or otherwise they will give the four quantum numbers based upon that you need to write the element what element they have given to you so the helium is 1s2 so coming to the first is the principal quantum number so here the principal quantum number we have the number 1 whatever the number we have it that is the principal quantum number we write it as 1 next coming to the l l is nothing but the subshells or what we call the orbitals what orbital we do we have here the subshell that is s so the s subshell has the l value as it has the l value as 0 so we represent it as 0 next coming to the ml if the s value is 0 then the ml value is also said to be called as 0 as we have discussed over here next coming to the ms as there are two electrons over here 
So as there are two electrons, if you draw the degenerating orbital of this, so we have only one single degenerating orbital. So there are two electrons. So one electron will be in upward direction and another electron will be in the downward direction. So as there are two different electrons with the two different directions, the electrons which are being placed in two different directions. So one is considered to be as plus half and another one is considered to be as a minus half. So this is an example for the Pauli's exclusive principle that no two electrons will be having the four quantum number same. Now in this case, for, for this electron, that is the up, the plus half electron, it has the n, m, l value 1, 0, 0 respectively. The same minus half electron also, uh, the minus half electron, which is the downward direction, also have the n, l, m value as 0, 1, uh, 1 0, 0 respectively. But when are coming to the spin orientation, the spin orientations are different. So the first electron is plus half, which is clockwise direction. And the second electron is a minus half, which is an anti-clockwise direction. So this principle was explained uh, was explained by Pauli's exclusion, that is Pauli's Linus, Lin, his complete full name is Lenin Pauli. Then we have an, another one, like if we take a sodium and the atomic number is 11. Now what they told they will tell you is to write the four quantum numbers of a sodium. We have to write the four quantum numbers for a sodium. So first whenever they give the sodium you need to know the atomic number and as atomic number is 11 and you need to do the electronic configuration. So all you have to do is you have to practice the electronic configuration thoroughly over here. So as we have 11 electrons, so 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, up to here we got 10, out of 11, 10 are completed, only 1 has been left, so we have taken as 3s1. Now in this case, you need to take the last one, which is the last energy level, that is the 3s1 is the last energy level. So as the 3s1 is the last energy level, based upon the last one, you need to write the 4 quantum numbers. So what we have the here is 3s1. So what is the principal number here? 3. So 3 is the principal number, so you write it as 3. What is the L value? What is the orbital present here? S. Then what is the L value for S? Yes, 0. And if L value is 0, then ML value also will be as 0. And M is. What we will be writing? As we have only one electron, what you will take? Plus half or minus half? which one we will be taking so as only one electron has been present over here so we can take it as plus half or minus half otherwise better to write only one electron one is enough only plus half why because while writing the outermost orbit of um, degenerative orbit we write only one electron which is the up arrow mark so we write it as plus half now in the case of if the L value is like some 1 or 2 or 3 then what we have to write for the ml value one best example we will be writing here that is for aluminium that is we will be writing for aluminium aluminium atomic number is 13 so while writing the electronic configuration make sure that your energy levels are being correct over here in a correct order clear now arrange the electrons 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 3p1 so 6 plus 2 8 8 plus 2 10 10 plus 2 12 12 plus 1 13 now which is the outermost uh, outer energy level so here 3p is the outer energy level so as 3p is the outer energy level so you need to consider this to write the four quantum numbers Now can you tell me the what is the principal quantum number over here? Yes, so 3 is the principal quantum number, so you will be writing as 3. And what is the L value? As P we have, so P L value, what is the P L value? For yes, we have 0. For P, yes, we have 1. Now coming to the ML value, so as we have 1 over here, 
the ml value will be having as minus 1 0 1 have understood that is px py pz so that is we should take the values whatever the values we are having here that we should be taken as from minus value to the plus value for example if we get l value as 2 then the ml value will be taken as minus 2 minus 1 0 1 and uh, two. you need to take this as a consideration so as l value is 2 then ml value will be taken as minus 2 minus 1 0 1 and uh, 2 now ms for as we have only one electron over here so one electron that also will be in a clockwise direction that is up arrow mark so will be taken as plus half in the same case also in some of the competitive examinations what they will do is they give you the four quantum numbers and by the help of these four quantum numbers you need to write the electronic configuration so how can you do that by writing the four quantum numbers the help of the quantum numbers how can you do it one best example I'm going to give here so this is one of the example so I have a n value as 2 is it clear I have a n value as 2 and a l value as 1 and a ml value as minus 1 0 1 and a ms value as plus half that is only one electron plus half now whenever they give the four quantum numbers you need to write in the form of electronic configuration so till now what we have done here see for helium with the help of the elect uh, electronic configuration we have written the four quantum numbers for sodium also we have written the four for the aluminum also we have written the four but here they are four and you need to write the electronic configuration you just go from the reverse that is what we can do is here what is the principal quantum number two that is mark it as two now what is the l value here l value is one now what is the l value as it is one so l value one means that is that is the value for p that is the value for p so l value one that is the value for p coming for p now ml so ml that is not much important when you are writing the electronic configuration so make sure that whether it is correct or not so 1 minus 1 0 1 2 minus 2 minus 1 0 1 and 2 now as we have ms we have that is plus half plus half that is we have only one electron so mention it as only one electron now we have 2p what is the before 2p before 2p we have 2s and before 2s we have 1s so if 2p is is having an electron then definitely these two are being completely filled out without filling of this the 2p electron cannot be elect the electron cannot be entered to the 2p orbital so that means these two electron 1s2 2s2 these two will be completely filled then only it can be entered to the 2p orbital otherwise it won't now what is the electronic complication 1s2 2s2 2p1 now count the number of electrons 2 plus 2 4 4 plus 1 5 so 5 that means what is the element the atomic number 5 which is called as boron b so this is how you need to write when they give the element to write the four quantum numbers and when they give the four quantum numbers this is how you need to write the electronic configuration and identify the amount the element which is given which is been given over here so till now what we have discussed is we have discussed about the electronic configuration so the electronic configuration is a shorthand notation of the principal quantum number the subshell and the number of electrons which is known as the nlx method so this is called as the nlx method so to write the electronic configuration we have to follow the above principle with the help of the Moyle chart the above principle and keep in mind in your mind that about the n plus l values and next we will be going for the Hund's rule so that is all the degenerating orbitals will be singly occupied in a in a uh, in a shell that is in a subshell that is the 2p or whatever maybe all the degenerating orbitals uh, should be singly occupied then it will be completely occupied over here and next we have seen about the Pauli's exclusion principle that is no two electrons will be having the four quantum numbers 
and we have seen some of the examples and giving the element how we can write the electron uh, four quantum numbers and giving the four quantum numbers how can we write the element over here that we have seen here so this is about the the structure of atom the electronic configuration the Pauli's exclusion principle of here so thank you thank you for watching the video so subscribe the channel for more videos and more interesting videos will be uploaded and thank you for your time for spending with me thank you